Hello everybody, welcome to the Novel Games Room. This is Naked Dave, and welcome back to the Great Backlog Challenge, Day 4. And today, we'll be playing... The Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, on the Xbox 360. Chronicles of Narnia is a story I have never read, and a series of movies I have never really watched. I may have watched the first movie, but it's kind of a blur. I think Liam Neeson was in it. I will find you. And I will kill you. Anyway, going into this game, I have absolutely no idea what to think, other than this is a movie game, and I've played plenty of movie games before, and they're all pretty much garbage. It is not very often you find a movie-based video game that actually works out. It's like finding a video game-based movie that actually works out. It just doesn't happen. Let's take a look at the box and see what kind of information it has in the back here. Fight as 20 different characters in epic battles. Drop in and play with a friend via co-op. That's it. That's that's literally all the box says. There's there's nothing else on here. How am I supposed to know what the hell this game is about if you're not going to tell me? And I can't go by what the pictures are on the back of the box, because if that's to believe, it's maybe the Prince of Persia? Is that a Yeti? I have no idea what the hell's going on in this game. Let's just dive right in and see what the fuck is going on. The Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, developed by Traveler's Tales and published by Disney Interactive Studios, is an action-adventure game that was released May 15th, 2008. The game was released on just about everything at the time, the PS2, the PS3, the Wii, the DS, the Xbox 360, and Windows PC. Theoretically, this game should have some pretty good voice talent, considering it's bringing back most of the actors from the movie. But we've seen how well Peter Dinklage does in video games. As you can see, most of the budget did not go to script writing or voice acting, as most of the scenes play out like this. Alright, let's jump right into the action. Prince Caspian, as far as I can tell, is a tale where a minotaur teams up with Peter Dinklage and two other people I don't care about on a quest to ride around on a giant version of the lead singer from Lamb of God. Alright, let's just let this picture sink in here for a minute. We have an albino minotaur with a mace riding around on the back of a bald giant wielding a hammer. How much more metal can you get? This game plays like a cross between Marvel Ultimate Alliance and Dynasty Warriors, but not quite as tight on either front. It is sloppy and it does not control very well at all. So, I gotta hit these things. Gotta wreck these guys. I'm gonna go over here and ruin these trebuchets. Sit over this one and... Let me, let me get this straight. Our first giant falls into a hole, so I need to go fetch a second giant to pull the first giant out. Why, why wouldn't I just use the second giant to jump over the hole and wreck the trebuchet and leave the first giant in there to rot? It's his own mistake. He made his bed, he can lie in it. All right, so we wreck this one, make our way over here, ruin this other guy, and okay, what now? Huh? My 30 minutes are up. I can turn this off. Sweet. All right, let's bring up the categories and see how this game stacks up. Looks. Nope, 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 nope. Not feeling it. This game came out in 2008, the same year as Grand Theft Auto 4 and Fallout 3. This game has no excuses. Nope, you can't fool me, game. Those ain't your graphics. Those are movies. Those are real people. 
Those ain't your polygons. For shame, game. For shame. Sounds. <clears throat> That's it. Those are the cutscenes. Every friggin' one. They don't write a line of dialogue. They don't bother to say anything. It's just grunting and wiggling. Moving on. Feels. This game is kind of like white bread. There's no substance, no flavor, and on its own, it's kind of boring. I mean, you do get to ride on the back of a giant and smash fuckers around, so it's got that going for it. Grip. This game has the grip of a one-sided clamp coated in butter. It did not hold me, I did not want to play it, and as soon as the 30 minute mark hit, I was gone. I was having no more of this nonsense. This game wasn't the worst thing I've ever played in the world. It's not even the worst movie-based game I've played. I mean, it's no E.T. But it did nothing to keep my attention. I guess I'm just not the key demographic for it because I'm not a fan of the story to begin with. But even if I was a fan of the story, I don't think I would have gotten from this game what I should get from a movie-based game. Or a game based on a property I really enjoy. And because I play a lot of games, I have that gamer instinct where I have to collect everything I see. So I found every key that I saw in the levels, and I picked up these treasure chests. And what did I get? What was my bonus for all that hard work? A mini game where I get to play as a mouse. That's it. It's hide and seek. There's nothing more. There's nothing to this game. Nobody cares. And with that, we bring day four of the Great Backlog Challenge to a close, folks. Stay tuned tomorrow when we'll be playing... Defiance on the PS3. And I will kill.